What happens when you put two artillery Lugers in the safe overnight? Stay tuned and you'll find out. First, you take a, a daddy artillery. This one is from 1918. A daddy and then a mommy artillery, also from 1918. They're both the same age. You put them in overnight and you're not gonna believe what happens when you come in the next day. Okay, mommy, here we go. Oh my goodness. So adorable. Be careful. Okay, enough tomfoolery. I hope you had fun with that. I know Randy and I were just cracking ourselves up. Um, so this is an exact rep replica. These were made in Russia in the 1990s. I did a short video, a, a, a 60 second video. Uh, this is exact replica of this, but in one third the size. I've already mentioned this one is a 1918 DWM and our newborn, little baby, DWM, and you probably can't see that, but that's 1917. Also, it has a serial number, which is 82, probably gun number 82. Uh, these were made by a company named Mini Art, and it was in the uh, basement of a armory museum in Moscow. I can't figure out how they got these into the country because these are working guns. So in the 1990s, it would have to have been import marked, but I suspect they were either brought in in, in somebody's checked-in luggage uh, or they were shipped as toys. Uh, but they do uh, shoot a little tiny pellet. I, I believe the caliber is a .177. You push this button, of course, and this comes out. And there's just like a, a little, almost the size of a BB cart and a cartridge, and it will shoot. It does have a firing pin. We're going to take it all apart. You can see the spring is... Pretty good. Let's go back to this. This comes off, take off the stock. This comes off, take off the stock. Take, oh, here's a flaw. Here's a flaw. Should be wood bottom. We'll have to write to the mini art company and let them know that this should be a wood bottom. There's no, uh, no number on the magazine, but it is a working magazine. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then the grips, the grips come off just like these grips. Uh, that unscrews pretty simply. Take down lever, this is what you're used to. Push that back, push the take down lever, and side plate comes off. And there's your trigger, which will come out. That pops right out. Let's take a look at this one. Push it, back. oh, by the way, adjustable. Works just like that. Adjustable. So <laughs> this is just uh, absolutely amazing. It's n certainly no toy. I'll push this back, put the lever down, side plate. That's right. Side plate comes off. <laughs> just a little baby one. There's a baby side plate. And then if you look at the trigger, you can see the two triggers. Take down lever. The take down lever comes out. That pops right out and trigger will pop right out, but we'll pull this apart. First, let's try it on this one. That slot, oh, take down lever just fell out. That's not supposed to happen. There's supposed to be a spring in there to keep it in place, but that's how the baby works too. That, that will pop right out. It comes apart and there's the hanger that holds it together. We pulled that off, but it, it shows you the scale of the parts. Again, one third, look at that exact, exactly the same, that comes apart. There's the uh, side plates, take down levers, two magazines. Now, once, once you have it down this far, then it's just that pin pops out. This is a good takedown video. And this comes off. There's your receiver and barrel. And then right there is the firing pin, and all you do is take a screwdriver, turn that, and the firing pin pops out. And guess how this one works? exact same way. Rear toggle pin comes out, put it next to the other one. I, this is one time I won't 
mess up the part. I usually <laughs> mix up parts. All right, then you, the toggle comes off. There's the receiver and the barrel. Let's see how the bore is. Eh, it has a little bit of rifling in there. You'll take my word for it. And then same exact thing, the, uh, there's the firing pin. There's the little, you take your screwdriver, twist it, and it comes out. It's exactly the same as the full scale model. So I already mentioned that these were made by Mini Art and um, came over in the 90s. Now, I, they, they stopped making them, and I'm not sure quite why because, uh, well, I'm, I'm sure they weren't a huge success, but for collectors, uh, they're available today because they are pretty rare. Uh, they're available today, and they're somewhere in the $2,000 range for the, the Mini ones. And after they stopped making them, of course, now they can't be imported because we don't bring anything in from Russia at this point. But I'm still curious as to how they got into the country. Again, I'm sure if you were shot with this little pellet, it, it might not even break the skin. But it would, it would sting, especially like a rubber bullet or something like that. It would definitely sting. Um, so it is a firearm and should have been import marked. Now can't be brought into the country. So, and they don't make them anymore. And I can't imagine that anybody would go to the, all the trouble to machine and reproduce these uh, just because uh, the amount of money you have to spend. Now they did make other models. Here's some examples. I know the Borchardt uh, they made. Uh, I think uh, Rock Island uh, sold a Borchardt mini art gun. And I think that was a, a couple thousand. And then you can see here some different models that they make, but probably one of the most popular was the Luger and especially the artillery. Now we're lucky to have one. I've heard of these and seen them at shows maybe once or one or two times, but uh, one of our customers sent us this and we will be making this one available. Well guys, it, it's time for her feeding. Uh, she just takes a little bit of oil and then she goes off to bed and uh, hopefully our artilleries will get busy and make another one.